in street scenes, you'll see a series of videos of the city. You'll see some aerial shots, and you'll see a couple that are either taken from the old carousel water tower, or perhaps the hill where the old high school was located. First scenario of the city. I'm uncertain about the building scene, spending a lot of time on it, but I cannot figure it all out. Then it switches to traveling into the four corners coming down on North Monroe, and next you are traveling west into the center of town from East Madison. Bowling alley readily seen as well as the Veterans Memorial Park and what was known for years as the Dime Store, the Beeble building on the corner. The next view is with the light plant on the right with the red roof. Then a view of the building next to the bridge on West Madison. That is Hot Mars Lumber and Professional Building are in the right foreground. Taken from the water tower, it's the four corners at night. A little hard to distinguish. The Beeble building is left center, and there's a car moving up North Monroe. Another shot from the water tower, once again the four corners, but pretty badly hidden by the trees. The Depover House and the GTE building on West Polk in the lower left corner, west of the old St. Joe's and Historical Society building. Then another view from the water tower, uh, facing northeast. Can readily see the elevator legs of the feed mill on Pierce Street. Then the view moves to the east side of town to see the old drive-in and uh, moving toward the Ducat Palace. Here are building. a couple of views from taken from a hill out south of town off of Highway O as it leaves town. And another rain, uh, second long range shot from the same area. Uh, then the thing goes down, down to the intersection of 89 and 19 as they join where Weedworth's Pure Oil Station was. Uh, then it zooms it towards the downtown area. Next, you're brought into the town from the north, quickly seeing the sign in front of the high school, and then past the school system, you see the view up towards Indian Hills and the new water tower. You'd think you were in Alaska with all this snow. Here we are moving toward town on South Washington Street, or O. Then quickly a shot of more snow shoveling at the foot of Indian Hills, and a couple of shots of North Monroe just outside the business district. Once again, are we in Alaska? A couple of seconds of the kids at the new library, then the city council meeting, which shows Gordy Cronin giving his report, also seen at Charlie Fisher, Rick Knoke, Juanita Meitner, Fred Hollis, Mayor, Gus Harms, Milo Silman, and Al Tuffy Burbach. Your balance in the bank is $110,105.99. We have in the the city has its own power company, utility company, and here's a short view of one of Waterloo's favorites, John Chick Foley, as he operates the equipment to take down a very large tree. Although the others are not seen very well, it's probably Ronnie Mouse Stokes with a chainsaw and Roger Rocky Hulseater, the other worker. Winner and Kraut Day. It was traditional that the high school band participate and kicked off this event with a short concert on the Four Corners. They are seen here with our rather famous color guard performing as they then led the parade up North Monroe Street. Pretty nice precision marching there, girls. Some of the crowd is seen in the background as they go up the street. A long time ago, a celebration was designed by the Chamber of Commerce, promoting two of the largest businesses in town. Wiener Kraut Day was created. Crest packing was very well known in the area, as was Van Holten's pickles and sauerkraut, and so a Wiener Kraut sandwich was a natural. The first year Wiener Kraut sandwiches were free, but that was badly abused with the sandwiches discarded after a bite or two, and so from then on there was a slight fee, initially a nickel. Going back, I recall when several bus busloads of people from Chicago used to make it a day to visit a small Wisconsin town. The numerous taverns all had live music, and the city hired various bands to play out in the street. It all became a hit very quickly. The serving line was in Veterans Park, and all the help were local volunteers. The ingredients were cooked and heated out the pickle factory and hauled in. Local volunteers did everything from selling tickets to serving sandwiches and everything in between. Of course, there was not only a raffle for a very large prize, a new car, but also hourly raffles and always uh, giveaways announced throughout the day. It sort of became a homecoming for many of the natives who lived out of town, but made sure to come back for that day. Uh, that also helped the tavern business, for many made arrangements to meet at one of the local watering holes. P. 
People were known to purchase a large amount of sandwiches for future use, for they were one heck of a bargain. In this uh, scene, you'll see some of the people that you might know, Charlie and Hilda Fisher, for example. And you'll be able to spot some folks that you knew, for they came from far and wide. Here we see one of the local fellows, Sticks Heidemann, spinning the barrel full of raffle tickets. This would be the tickets for the big event, I suspect. The, the car. And Ray Estervig was often heard on the microphone making announcements and calling names of drawing winners throughout the day. There he is, Ray Estervig. In later years, the Alti Kameraden band from Mequon were hired to perform on and off throughout the day. Dressed for the occasion with their lederhosen, they were always a hit. The police department had a big day with the crowds and the traffic since the center of activity was the Four Corners and Veterans Park. The merchants put a lot of their products on sale, and vendors were allowed to come in from out of town to help create a Maxwell Street atmosphere. It used to be quite a day. In later years, it seems to have died down or dwindled off, and that's too bad. But uh, it's, it is still held once a year, in first week in September. Um, but the crowds don't seem to be as great, at least as great as I remember. <laughs> 